Welcome back to the coverage of YCS Dusseldorf. Uh, we are here with Alberto Marazzi from Rome, Italy, and uh, we're going to talk about him. So introduce yourself. Yeah, so I am Alberto Marazzi. I'm 23 years old. Um, I've been doing coverage lately in the last year for the Italian National Championship as well. And uh, today, yeah, we'll show you my deck for the weekend that is Subterra. Yeah, essentially Subterror is a deck that has been out for a lot of time, but it got a huge release in the last uh, set, Savage Strike. And a lot of people have heard uh, comparing it to the old Gearja deck. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it's basically kind of, because like the main monster there, which is Subterror Guru, is pretty strong and as well it's like kind of similar to the Gearja, so... Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. So explain explain the deck for us. So okay, so basically the deck is like a, a rock deck. So it relies on a trap core, pretty consistent deck. So uh, we have the guru, which is like the main monster of the deck, uh, but also the the field spell, the hidden city, is like the best card of the deck as well because like it permits you to uh, search for monsters and as well there's the fiendness, which is like a sort of a hand trap that can negate everything else on the field if you have a phase up sub terror monster. And I play like less copies of other cards such as Archer, um, Uma Strix, and the Trap card as well. Yeah, because basically the Guru, as you were saying, uh, when it's flipped, you get any Subterra card from the deck. So you play multiples of like the really good one, and then you can afford to play just a one off of a situational one because you can search it whenever you need. And uh, yeah, uh, from the new set, so what do the one-offs do? So, yeah. so basically the one-off archers is like one of the um, um, best monsters of the deck as well because like if you have another face-up uh, sub-terror monster on the field, you can shuffle back a monster of their opponent if he's face down. And thanks to the sub-terror guru effect, the second effect is like a Book of Moon. So basically when you go declaring an attack, you can sh just shuffle back the monster into the deck. Uh, the other monster, which is Uma Strix, it permits you to banish one car one monster on the field when it's face up, and the trap card basically it permits you to uh, change the position of a monster when you face up or face down. Or um, another important effect of the card uh, is that it can uh, combine both the attack of a, and defense of a monster so that uh, it's bigger. And uh, another important effect, in my opinion, is that um, it doesn't go to the graveyard. So yeah, basically uh, it sets itself every turn, and it has four different effects so depending on the situation you can choose to use any and then set it back and next turn you're able to use another effect so uh, it's as you said it's similar to Gearja but it doesn't have a lot of uh, monsters you play like 10 even less sub terror cards and you always just win with the guru by doubling its attack every turn and uh, just controlling the game and we talked about Savage Strike and how it was important for this deck uh, and it is important especially because of a new card, the Pot of Extravagance, right? Yeah, Pot of Extravagance is like a really good addition to this deck because like it permits you to, go, to start off with six cards and this is like one of the best things to do with this deck as well. So basically you can banish uh, three up to, up to six monsters of your extra deck to draw two cards. So like it's, it's, it's really good, and it can, but one important thing that it can be activated at the start of your main phase one, so be careful. Yeah, basically, you don't need an extra deck. That's the fun part about this deck. You can play like 15 blank cards in your extra deck because you don't really go often into Link Monsters and uh, your win condition is just Guru. And as we said, this is a rogue deck, so it's full of traps. You have all the good old ones like Solemn Strike, Solemn uh, Warning, even Judgment, which is freely released. And uh, you have a lot of floodgates as well. Uh, which do you choose to play for this event in the main deck? So basically, one of the best cards of the weekend in my opinion will be there can only be one as well and also I'm trying and I think I will play limit summon because like it will be the MVP summon limit yeah, summon limit, yeah because it will be the MVP of the weekend because like most of the deck has in this moment uh, play multiple monsters in one turn and like Thunder Dragon or Salaman Great as well So it will be a good card for my opinion. Yeah, bas basically uh, Since you're gonna have only one monster most of the time you can play there can only be one and it's gonna be great against Thun um, Salaman Great decks while at the same time Salmon Limit is really really good against combo decks and uh, They can only yeah, it's really hard to deal with it. You have also a few entrops in the deck so you're prepared when you go second yeah. And uh, what, what do you think is the best and the worst matchup for this deck? So the worst matchup of this deck is for sure Sky Striker. So like if people will play Sky Striker this weekend, it will be pretty hard for this deck to win because like 
Uh, this deck, as I said, is a rock deck, but Sky Striker is actually a really good engine and it is better in my opinion. Uh, good matchup for this deck, it will be Salaman Great and Thunder Dragon as well, but as I said, if you start, you are in a really good position. If you go second, you are in trouble, but you can deal with it. Okay, so I think it's uh, quite a good uh, deck for people that like control and rogue decks more. It's been tough in the past, but uh, let's hope you don't play too many Sky Strikers. So good luck for the weekend. And uh, guys, keep watching uh, the stream for more coverage of YCS Dusseldorf.